Hey everyone. Welcome to Black Creators Unite. And my name's Lanique Louie and I'm the founder. So those of you that don't know what Black Creators Unite is, is a platform that I set up solely to elevate my black brothers and my black sisters so that we can connect, we can network, we can just elevate, you know, and it's important that especially in this time that we connect with one another. Yes, so hold on a minute. This is live, guys, so just there's just a few little glitches. Always there's glitches. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so. So again, what Black Creators Unite and solely what the purpose of me setting this up was is to have these kind of, this kind of platform right here, what you see right now, is to have engaging content that will inspire us, you know, um, edify us, encourage us to keep going higher. Like that is what it's about. And the mission and the motto of Black Creators Unite is when you're winning, we're all winning. And it's as simple as that. And that is what it's about. Today's talk, we have got, it is gonna be, I have been waiting for this. Like I've been waiting for this for a long time. Patrick is, a, a firecracker, a guess he's just a man that wants to see his people win in so many capacities. And he is just full of passion, full to give back. And it is going to be a, an amazing um, interview that we're going to have. And for those of you that are business owners um, and also thinking of, you know, starting your business, you need to listen and take note, get your notepads out and get your pens and start to write down the content he is gonna be giving you because it is gonna be, it's gonna be life changing because as black people, we need to bring a level of excellence in everything we do. We need to make sure that how we're presenting ourselves, how we're presenting our business is always at a high standard. That's, there's no short measured like at all. You know, in regards to 2020, and going forward, there needs to be a level of excellence when we're coming to the forefront, when we're presenting ourselves. And that is what Patrick is all about, a level of e excellence in everything you do. So it is gonna be amazing. I can't wait for him to just come on. So I'm gonna bring him on right this minute. Hey, Patrick. Hi, Louis. Monique, how you doing? Yes, I am so good. As I oh, said, I... Thank you for the wonderful intro. Oh, so, you're welcome. It's the truth. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, well, I hope we all gain a lot from this, really, uh, and to excel everyone uh, yeah. in in business, in brand, and in, in the in in their product, etc. And and hopefully we can all learn from each other and excel, as you say, because it's about wealth right across. Yeah, definitely. Is you know, as I said, I've been looking forward to this, and a lot of the people within my industry have been looking forward to this because it's not just hearing your story and your inspirational story of how you came into this industry and dominated it in such a way. It's the fact that your heart and your business they go hand in hand. You just want to elevate people, especially your own people, because you you you're in you've worked with so many good businesses. Like, you know, obviously some you're not going to mention because obviously you're a very private and humble man and that's understandable. However, it's, there's a lot of things that you see that we're doing wrong and it's about transparency. You're not helping someone if you're just going to let them do the same thing. You're going to, you, uh, you help people by, with love and be like, that, you're not doing that right. Why don't you do it like this? And, you know, Absolutely. this, and this, um, you know, this live that we're going to have is going to be, there's a lot of things that I need to bring up. And, you know, this conversation, we, we, we speak um, not on here, but outside of this. And we are very much on the same level in regards to where our people need to be. There's just no Absolutely. excuses anymore. It's just, it's, it's yep. there is no excuses whatsoever. And as black people, we really need to change our mindset. There can't be that no methods. Sorry, go on. We need we need to change our mindset. Uh, we need to uh, for forever and a day. I can remember every one of us talking about how we can do things better, right? Mm. Uh, 
how we've been oppressed and if we weren't we can do things better mm. now we've got the opportunity with platforms like this mm. to actually excel ourselves excel our businesses mm. promote ourselves in the right manner mm. um and 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 really take on the bigger brands there's there's no you know there's no ceiling to this there's some mm. wonderful out there there's there's some wonderful businesses out there and we shouldn't aim low we should be aiming high and we should learn and take and understand what we're doing and our knowledge and and to understand you know that we've created some of the most uh, innovative products in this world you know uh, right yeah. the so there's nothing stopping us as a culture from doing this again but mm. we've got uses this time we're using you know all our platforms now and so we need to think smart we need to think clever we we need to stop thinking that we're only only going to take our product just to our people after all we've been all buying products <laughs> from yeah. we're going to markets we've been buying products for a day in day out and mm. these products are being created not by black people so why don't we take them on why don't we create a product our brand yeah. to excel that and to say you know what i want everyone to buy our product because let's be mm. honest mm. we are a minority right and if mm. we only talk our own culture then at the end of the day we're not going to excel and we're not going to be wealthy we need to target on a global basis so mm. we need to brand, we need to look at our products and we need to say to ourselves i want this on every shelf i want unilever to be selling this i want procter mm. gap selling my product yeah um, and and just to excel the businesses yeah uh, it, it's a uh, you know if i can start how i got into the business yeah uh, a hard struggle yeah. it's never easy for a person of color as everyone mm. will know who into this mm. right now so as my mother said you always have to be better than what you are uh, mm. and one else it's not good enough just being good you have to be better because to be recognized yeah um, i came out of university and i dropped out believe it or not mm. <laughs> i was in st martin's and i wanted to earn a lot of money because in those yeah. days i'm back 30 plus years um, mm. it was more, jobs were more about experience rather than qualifications so yeah. if the kid right now it's all about qualifications so study hard simple yeah. as that I got myself into the business and I came out wanting to earn some more money. Yeah. Earn a lot of money. That was my theory. Mm. Um but for the first year in my life in the creative business and I literally grew up in Soho and Farrington mm. and Clark in all the companies. Um I spent the first year as a bike messenger guy and here's a guy who who had creative talent you know from St Martin's and and I was treated like someone who just gets the lunches and Wow. And I couldn't get my hands on doing anything creative. Mm. So a long story short, I left that and I moved on and I excelled myself in every job I went to. Mm. The biggest break I got I suppose came from a a wonderful guy and I think I've discussed this with you before. Yeah. Uh by the Clive McBain. Now mm. Clive McBain a white gentleman. Yeah. Uh an absolute icon in the creative industry he owned Bain no Johnson he's retired now mm. and his sister company to Abbott Mead Vickers which is the second largest global advertising agency in the world and Clive took me under his wing because he saw I had a passion for creativity mm. and I that part of it and so he literally threw campaigns at me um like yeah. the those days it was called yellow pages um and ccat and delta airways mm. and we do all the art direction on it and 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 gather all the images for all these campaigns and these were global advertising campaigns mm. and i learned so much from him on creativity um on learning how to conduct yourself within the creative environment going mm. on pitch in those days i was a young lad and and yeah. to go on pitch to a corporate client with him it's just phenomenal uh, yeah. for me um so that was my roots really and from then on i just kept excelling within the creative industry mm-hmm. and improving myself yeah uh, 
obviously I've been an MD of several global uh, um, companies. Um, and obviously, I don't know if you're going to mention that, obviously. <laughs> you're very uh, humble, uh, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've been, you know, started up my own business, we had uh, a massive influence within the business. Uh, we created some of the most iconic uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that people see now. Um, for yeah. example, myself and another colleague from another agency, we put together in those days all the lorries for Sainsbury's and Tesco's and all that. They, they, they were just white. And we mm. created the fruits the lorries. Mm. And so the living brand was, was born uh, mm. for Sainsbury's. And then everyone copied us. Um, and Sainsbury's has been a lot of that, as they do. And, and so I try to be setting a benchmark in, in quality and, 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 and being really articulate in what you want really in, in the advert or the design or the brand. And it has to have some meaning. It has to have mm. an emotion, uh, regardless of what you're doing, uh, in, in branding, um, Coming back to, to, to setting out, I mean, I see so many posts, so many on support UK black businesses, on black economy, yeah. where someone says, I need a logo. And then mm. you get 101 mm. designers, I'm sure some of them are very good, uh, saying, I can do a logo. And here's the thing. It's about brand. Mm. It's not your logo. Your logo is a reflection of your brand. Mm. Your That's what that and, and I guess hold on, hold on, Patrick. I want people to listen, uh, listen with your ears to this because Patrick has been in the industry for 30 plus years. He knows what he's talking about. So you guys need to listen to these nuggets that he's given you in regards to branding and what he's saying. He knows. He is winning and he's made other business win. So we need to listen to these nuggets that he's given us. I'm taking in everything. I'm, as I said, after this, I'm going to be writing down notes. You know, I can't do it while we're speaking because that's just not, you just can't do that. But however, these are nuggets and we need to listen to this because it's all about elevating as a people and each other. And it's, and as you know, when you're winning, we're all winning and that's how we need to be. So go on, Patrick. Absolutely. And, and it's about the passion that you put into each clientele, really. Mm -hmm. you, I have quite a few people contacting me. Uh, they want to do something with their brand. Now, what you have to do, first of all, is understand what you're about, what mm -hmm. your is about, what you want to get across to the consumer. Uh, mm -hmm want to portray your business <clears throat> pardon me to the consumer the tone of voice as it's called yeah so that has a can lot you, of um, Patrick, sorry can you explain these terms because we know it but a lot of people that yeah. are not haven't basically researched and kind of done that research can you explain what it is in layman terms so that people can really understand what tone of voice is what all these these key words that you use and what it means just break it down a little bit so that people can understand sure. yeah sure um the tone of voice is what you 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 have as your message for yeah. your business meaning if you're an ethical product if you're a sustainable product uh in the values that you hold within yourself that you want to put within your business mm. so that is that builds up to being part of your tone of voice. Mm. So portrayed in your message to the consumer. It's an emotional message. It's a message of your personality and mm. that's in your business. So mm. when you're creating a brand, as you know, um, there's a huge brand brief and you take on board, you ask them questions, you ask the client questions. What, you know, how do you feel about your company? What, what, you know, drives you uh, to, to want to set this up? What sort of message do you want to give out there? So all these attributes from your own personality and what you believe in as your product or your brand has to be visualized for a start. So it's not just about your logo. It's creating that brand. 
Mm-hmm. And then you the colors uh, uh, that, that, that evoke emotion and certain colors have certain meanings. Mm. For example, um, even in our brand, uh, 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 we've got a black and an orange. Mm. Now, black is for the strength and the seniority, and the orange is for, for the perseverance and, and, and really uh, 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 showing that we're compassionate as mm. well. Every color has to have a meaning, in, including in, in your branding, in, mm. in black and green, etc. They all have to have a meaning and there has yeah. to be a reason. But one thing I will say, um, that before when I was in the industry and I was, you know, doing my brand, I didn't necessarily know about tone of voice. And it's important when you say to yourself, I want to elevate myself and I want to have a clear, defined idea of what my brand stands for and what I'm about. I didn't know these terms, tone of voice. I had to research because I, I, I want to, to my brand to be sustainable. So I said, okay, I can't just pick out a color and just say what that I just want green and black. It's like, what does black represent? What does green represent? What is the color code of that? So that when I put out anything related to my business, there's consistency throughout. So this is the right. thing is that when you're serious about your branding and serious about your brand going forward and to be sustainable and to be a household name, you have to do all of this. You have to do these steps. If you're not going to do those steps, you're just going to be a generic, just, just everyone else that, that's out there and, and just be content. And we're not looking to be content, guys. We're looking yeah. to be wealthy and not rich. So, that's right. Yes. Uh, it, it is all about the brand. Um, mm-hmm. And you're quite right, Lenique, uh, at the end of the day. Um, you, you, you need to consider what the colours represent for you. Yeah. And fairness, you need to look at that from... Eyes wide shut, really, at the end of the day, because mm-hmm. if you, from a cultural point of view only, rather than growing your business as a global brand, you will pick colors that only really reflect for you. Mm-hmm. You need to that you feel compassionate about, but at the yeah. same time, compatible by everyone else. Prime example, as we all know, the most iconic brand in the world, Coca Cola. Now, mm-hmm. Coca Cola depicted Father Christmas being the red and the white, and you see it in all the adverts at Christmas time with the Coca-Cola advert, and you, mm. you, you tend to associate Father Christmas and, and Coca-Cola as being one. Well, in actual fact, Coca-Cola didn't actually invent the red coat as most people would like to think. It was done in the 1930s by another marketing business who, 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 okay. who, who did the, the Santa Claus with a red coat. It just so happens Coca-Cola's marketing department realized that's a great sort of, mm. you know, a voice to go with. Uh, let's, let's incorporate Father Christmas because he's got our colours. Mm. Incorporated that in all their campaigns, etc. So people now associate that Christmas time. You see the lorry all lit up with Father Christmas on the side. So they they think of that. So you need to pick colours and your brand very carefully. So yeah. that it can it you know it still needs to have your emotion. It still needs yeah. to have your message. Yeah. But it needs to be approachable and it needs to be welcomed on a global basis. You need to yeah. think global. You know, don't just think, oh, I've got this company and I'm setting up the company. You know, let's call it an energy company. Yeah. And I'm going to be setting it up for uh, 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 London. Well, mm. you want to grow, right? You yeah. might want to expand that to France or Germany or whatever. So you mm. need to think how your brand is going to be reflected in all those countries. And, yeah. and really condense that down and think about really what you want. Mm. See, there's the psychology of color because certain colors evoke certain emotions within the human brain. It's called hacking the brain, really. Yeah. Um, you hack the brain with certain colors that are emotions. Um, prime example, the M&S colors, the Sainsbury's colors, the cable and wireless colors. You know, all these colors of the blue meaning regality uh, in, in Sainsbury's. 702 blue uh, and the orange as well very similar to our orange it evokes the same emotions and this is what it's about it's evoking emotions um very rarely you would see an energy company that wants to use deep dark tones they want to use bright vibrant that 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 affects nature yeah yeah and and then you get something like a financial company who wants to be looked at as being 
uh, in the business for a long time. They're very serious. They want to be very stern. Mm. They pick a lot of colors, very dark colors. So yeah. what we should be looking at for our own businesses. So when you yeah. wake up in the morning and you thought about a business that's going to change everyone's life, think about how you're going to get that across yeah. to general public. Don't just think on a tunnel vision that I want to help our own black people. You can do that. Mm, and, and there's nothing wrong with that, yeah. The, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But what we need to do is stop thinking that, and that actually stops us from thinking that we can be those black people in the very higher echelons. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we're thinking on a narrative on a very low level. And we actually need to be thinking higher up. Yeah. We need to be saying, okay, I want to create a brand, whether it be, you know, I'm starting up a shop, I'm only mm -hmm. going to be selling caribbean products or whatever but let's do it in a way that you know what someone would mistake that for a a, a waitrose store or, yeah or like that, yeah right yeah, yeah. amazing it's got all our products on there because why should we have our products or any brand that we create as a black business be looked at as second rate i don't believe in that i yeah. don't help create a brand to be second rate Come i on. look at we, you know, we need to create a brand, and we always do it. We future-proof the brand. Yeah. I always ask question to someone, where do you want to see your company in five years and ten years yeah. from now? So that's how we need to create the brand. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of people who go out their way and get their logo done on these very cheap websites, uh, number one, you don't own it. They own it, which is why they send it to you as a JPEG or a PNG. And then when you want the brand itself and it's worked, the logo, whatever, they'll evaluate your company and you'll end up paying a lot more money than you thought. Oh, so, yes. Because they're not researching the market. There's been yes. 101 companies that have fallen short of this one because they've gone to a probably a very good designer. Um, yeah. They don't specialize in brand. And there's a long part of uh, 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 the long and the short mm. we do research before even we put pen to paper when we create a brand because one we need to look at the market that you're going into mm. to look at how you're going to expose yourself within that market and how you're going to grow that business within that market yeah. so all aspects come into the research for us and we and depending on the size of the company we might spend a day or two or if it's a, a corporate joint we probably spend a month because we need to get all of this right. Mm. Uh, to make sure that we're putting that, what we're putting in front of the, the clientele and changing their, their brand is not going to harm their brand uh, mm. and, and likely to excel it. So we need to be thinking on that level. And I see so many wonderful, wonderful products on a lot of these sites yeah. owned, owned by black uh, owned businesses, mm. whether they're a food product or a drinks product and i'm thinking wow you could excel that product it's obviously a fantastic product but how you branded it mm. and you're there's not much thought gone into so I, you've you segregated yourself already you've yeah. already narrowed your margin off your market yeah. mm -hmm. so instead of saying um, you know two million of your units you'll sell twenty thousand of them as well mm -hmm. as if you here's yeah. a prime example uh reggae reggae sauce yeah oh good um, yes go on. yeah levi okay mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. one of my previous agencies that we worked at um peter and deborah from dragon's den used to approach us all the time when they bought a client uh, or invested for us to do the brand changes and the brand mm -hmm. rebrand of the client because they never liked it because they yeah. not went into it now levi roots for a start if you saw his first lot of packaging it was very much targeted at one particular market now considering a dragon invested in it they thought well hang on a second i want this to be bought by everyone yeah. so it retained that culture and that essence and that message of his culture in that labeling still but the labeling and the branding has changed to reach a global market. Mm. And he, he's excelled in now with uh, 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 ready-made meals 
uh, not yeah. just yeah. Mm -hmm. and so he, you know he's become wealthy from that from just yeah. learning that it's about um, you know selling your product on a global level rather than a niche market a niche market will never make you wealthy um, yes you'll get a lot of pats on the back and everyone's saying you're a great guy you're sticking to your roots but you're in business to earn money you're yeah. not in business to be friends with everyone right yeah. Yeah. Today. So you need to think bigger than that you need to think mm. okay how's my product or how's my business how's my brand going to be received in iceland yeah, mm. there's not many people there, but at the end of the day, it's about business, and and mm. you need to project your your business mm. on whether it be a corporate level or whether you want to be a trendy urban brand. There's lots of trendy urban brands that are making it very well out there. Um, you know that that have a certain tone of voice. Grenade for mm. one. Um, you know that do, does all the the, the bars and the, the 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 nutrition bars, etc. So. There are lots of brands that do some wonderful things out there and they stick to their roots. And mm -hmm. I'm trying to bring to our people to, to yeah. wake them lift that wet veil up and say, don't just target us. You need to target everyone. I want you to be big. I want to see Amazon flying with your products. I want to see everyone. You know, when your yeah. product, when you've got a product, whether it be a bank or, or, or a corporate company or a retail business or you've started up a shop, there's nothing stopping you from doing it in the right manner and projecting that brand in the right manner. There's nothing stopping you. The only thing that's stopping anyone is knowledge of what can be done. So approaching companies like us, we help to get up that ladder. But yeah. these things don't come cheap at the end of the day. And yeah, it's true. It's true. I'm yeah. glad you touched on that because um, the last talk I did with TJ, I was saying when you want to invest yourself and you want to make a sustainable impact, and the reason why I say sustainable because there's longevity to in regards to how long your brand is going to be out there. It's not just yeah. you know you're what you're hot one minute and then that's it. No one's heard of you in, in two years because you've just gone downhill. So they, in order, if you want to elevate your brand, you have to spend money. And that is what the other races are doing. They are willing, they're yeah. taking calculated risks because they know if yeah. I put money into this then and get the experts, it's going to elevate. And that is the difference between black people and other races. And that is simply it. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of other races that are using our culture, as we, we've spoken about, <laughs> and they're winning right now because yeah. they know what to do. They know what yeah. to do. They will take elements of what you know, what the good things about us, and they will expand it so it's yeah. more palatable for all everyone. You know, so they have chains of products or you know restaurants and and um, you know the it can go on makeup. You know, there's so many things they steal from us. So, <laughs> I mean, from a from a from a business point of view, uh, when you create your brand, um, you've got to ask yourself, how do you want your clientele to see you? Mm -hmm. Now, if you want your clientele, whether you're a, a property company, whether you're a, a, a retailer, or whether you're you know starting up any business, mm. you want yourself to be seen as being professional. You want yeah. yourself to be seen as uh, uh, not a fly by night for a start. You wanna be seen as being a substantial company. So mm. by you going down the route of going down to say these companies that, or, or a designer that's gonna design your logo uh, for about a hundred quid, that already sets the, the, the precedent right. that your company's cheap. Yeah, right? yeah, Much come on. Is and the reason being is because a year down the line, you might need to do an event. You might need to do shirts and polo shirts to your embroidery of your logo on it. And a lot of the time, these people don't supply your product in the right manner so you can utilize that for other, other means in exhibitions or events or printing because they only have a web-based mentality thinking that you're only going to use that logo for your website. Oh, 
on. Do you know how many times this happens? It's like it's happening oh. all the time, and and I'm so disheartened that I see. Um, you know, there are a lot of talented young designers out there, and I've got to say that. And when I see their work, and I see some of them on that site, I'm thinking you're talented, but you need guidance. You don't yeah, understand yeah. by the fact of what you've done because you're not exposing or helping your clientele by just taking a hundred quid off them, giving them a, a JPEG off their logo and off you go, mate. You can, you can yeah, put it on your the JPEG, right. the infamous JPEG that everyone gets. That's and, when you know the yeah. level of the cheapness of it. Yeah. Not even PNG. And, absolutely. And, and, and even when you go to start to print your brochures or you go into printing uh, 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 for your exhibition or your event, we, because we have some companies within under the umbrella and we only print in CMYK. So mm -hmm. that's a color process. So if your logo is not made up into the right format, it's just unprintable. It's it's not yeah. fit for it's gonna be right? fixed. Yeah. You wasted your money, really, at the end of the day. Um, and you have to get your logo recreated all over again. So mm -hmm. When you wake up one morning and you've got the elixir of product and you think you're going to be a multi-millionaire, then think about what you need to do as a business. When you approach a bank and you go there with your business plan, mm. um, you ask them, look, I need to set up an account. I'm probably going to need a loan, right? Mm. Or some Part of that business plan should be you putting in the cost for your brand, of creating your brand. And when a bank or a financier sees that you are taking your brand serious enough to put that in there, which a lot of people don't do, mm. um, whether it be your brand and then your marketing, etc., they know that you're going to be serious about this because you've actually asked for that. I mean, for a small brand, it could be anything from 500 to 2,000, depending on the complexity of the brand. Mm. For the bigger brands, you know, I mean... Look, Sainsbury's and Marks and Spencer's and people like that, they paid six figure sums. There's a mm. reason for it because there's a lot of thought and time and effort gone into it. And these are multi, multi million pound companies. So you can still take that knowledge and you can take that skill set of what needs to be done and offer it to the smaller companies on yeah. a more warm level to mm. still bring them up to the level. And there's nothing stopping them from doing that. So it's very disheartening when I see some amazing products and some amazing brands, black people with some, look, right now, the hottest thing in the market right now is organic and ethnic foods, right? Mm -hmm. And be a lot of organic and ethnic foods right now from amazing, amazing brands. You could see the product is, is well thought of, but they haven't thought of, of how I'm going to brand this. Mm. I'm Mm -hmm. chicken sauces but her her label on it doesn't say the quality of the product or anything mm -hmm. else and she's an amazing lady and and with a great background behind her so there's all these things and even down to the fonts you know some of them have been on there <laughs> i had a i, I had a no, customer on, no because we need to hear this we need to hear this actually this what it's about you need to just say it just be blunt, be transparent, because that's the only way we will elevate as people. We need to hear this. And sometimes it's it's, it's not going to be nice, because it's the truth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had one customer who um, approached me, um, sent me over her logo. I said, okay, so you, you've got a logo. Uh, it doesn't say anything about your business. How did you create this? She said, oh, I did it on my phone. Now, you're sending me an image that you created on your phone and you've got aspirations of being a big brand uh, in a nutritional market, uh, in the pouches. And I said, y y this is never going to work. And then yeah. I had another client, which I won't mention name because they've excelled quite well now, yeah. who approached us and said, I need my branding done. They have a vegan product, which is amazing. I need my branding done, my packaging done, my website done. We said, okay, fine. We spent a week odd discussing it with them. We gave them a cost. They went, oh, that's a lot of money. So she decided to go overseas and get it done. 
She got it. She got it done for a couple of hundred dollars overseas. Her brand. She got her packaging done for a couple another couple of hundred dollars on all her SKUs. She has about twenty SKUs, and you know she's producing probably twenty thousand of each SKU, maybe more. Uh, frozen product. Uh, she got her website done. All went. She was very happy. Spent next to nothing. But what she used was a person, one who didn't have any insight into the UK market mm. and the UK market. And most importantly, like most of these so-called logo designers, they see something on the web. They like that. They like this. They incorporate that in their logo. Uh, I'm not saying all of them do it. Some of them, you know, are very good and want to really try hard and do it by themselves. But in most occasions, because they haven't done any research, which is the most important thing, they've created something that's not really going to work. And the reason why it's not going to work because after she had launched her product, and you know, she's filled a warehouse with frozen products, spent about. I don't know, eighty thousand, ninety thousand on all her products, getting all the packaging print and done website as soon as she launched her website within a week she had a very large brand knocking on her door and saying you got 24 hours to take down that brand take down your website and rebrand because you've emulated our products and our brand um if not we're mm -hmm. going to we're worth because in our business we call it bastardizing a brand and that's mm -hmm. exactly what they did um so she then was out of pocket because she then had to get it brand again. And when she came back to us, we refused to help her. Uh, oh, because wow. For one reason only. We spent a week of our time trying to help her. She did not, she wasn't interested. She'd done her own thing. Um, and then when she wanted to come back to us, we said it's best you work with another design agency because at the end of the day, we gave you, uh, as I always believe in the three Bs, we give you the best advice, we're going to give you the best product, and at the end of the day, you're going to be working with some of the best people in the business. Mm. So that's what I believe in. And we gave her that. And, you know, she's pulled herself together, but it cost her over 200 grand to do that. Wow, God. And these are the, the pitfalls that any company, any brand, any person that's looking to make a brand, unless it's bespoke, unless there's research gone into it, you have a high chance that <clears throat> if you pay cheap, you've gone down the route of maybe em emulating another brand. And not even maybe, not even maybe, <laughs> majority of the time. Because you yeah. see a generic kind of style of what people are doing because they look into their left and right. I want to be like that person. I want to be like that. No. That's right. I get that all the time, mm. right? Um, I want to look at this brand. And what people forget is that they come to us and um, they want to be like a certain brand. Now, these companies that are on the shelves that have got a certain brand that are very famous, they've spent hundreds of thousands of pounds creating that brand and that packaging design, <coughs> pardon me, and everything and the marketing that goes along with that brand. Now, if you approach us on a shoestring, and say, I want to be like that brand, we can't make a silk purse out of a pig's ear. It's a silk yeah. purse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can't do that. If, you yeah. know, the, you're, you're investing in your product. If you believe in your product, you believe in your brand, you believe in your company, that is an investment that you're doing. It's the same as you uh, 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 renting an office or, or buying in equipment. It's all investment for your business to grow. So your brand mm. or packaging or anything that you do for your business mm. is an investment. Mm. And that's you should look at it. A mm. lot of people, they look at that as an add-on. Oh, I've only got, you know, uh, 200 pounds. Well, how are you going to create that brand that looks like, for, I'm just going to give part of the sky, um, Campbell's only got 200 pounds that's not possible a lot of these brands they, mm -hmm. they font and to the font you know that you use people need to think about the psychology of font even that evokes motions and we spend a lot of time i mean we've got over what twenty-eight thousand fonts within our library 
Wow. But there comes a time where we have to create a new font to emulate and to depict that company or that brand and, mm. and, and sort of mirror it and, and, and sort of complement it. There's no point us picking Arial or something like that for someone who, who, who's you know, trying to be, a, 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 for example, a, a beauty brand or something like that. We need to pick something elegant, something modern. It depends mm. what, what ethos they, they want to go with. All these factors matter in even to the font which is highly, highly important because a font can make or break your brand. Mm. It's as simple as mm. that. If Coca-Cola yeah. tomorrow had to come back and rebrand and they just did Ariel with Coca-Cola, no one would associate Coca-Cola or associate that drink with Coca-Cola mm. again. The Coca-Cola font was a hand-drawn font. You can never buy it on the market. You can buy a similar font, uh, but you can never buy that font because it was a hand-drawn font, a font especially for, for Coca-Cola. So mm. uh, there's so many aspects that we look into. We don't just pick a colour out of thin air and we don't just pick how we're going to depict the brand. Uh, and, and if people look at our website, they'll, they'll see that we worked with some amazing brands uh, and not just on the branding part of it, but also on the product bottle like for the yeah. perfume or, or the aftershave you know th that bottle was created by us uh, it, mm. it's not you know even down to that and these things all cost money at the end of the day uh, but they're, not cheap. Gonna, they're not cheap yeah i was gonna say um you know why do you think with i'm not saying all black people but the majority yeah, the majority when we do things, why does it have to be substandard? I don't. I. I. I, I want to understand this. Why do we? Why does everything have to be rushed? Why don't we take the time to kind of research and? Because obviously, all these things you're teaching us, and you know, we thank God for it. However, as I said before previously, that could because I want my brand because I, you know, I want it to be a sustainable brand. I did the research needed to know about tone of voice, color codes, you know, all these things. I've got to say, that, yeah. What you said to me, oh, what you what say? You said to me, my business partner and I looked at it and we said that was the most extensive, clear, concise brief we have ever seen. Oh, what? <laughs> from, from a own brand person. Wow, so, and I did it all by myself, no one else. Like, fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. I wish we had that from every own brand person. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing about it is that it's not, look, it's not because we as a culture feel that we don't want to be there. I think it's about just understanding and knowledge, okay? And the problem that we have is that we get influenced by our roots, not every packaging, no matter what it is, has to have palm trees and a sunset on it. <laughs> it's as simple as that. <laughs> we need to make our brands available for the general public. You go into a, any retailers and you buy cocoa butter and you look at that on the shelf. Chances are that's owned by a white company, but you've bought it. So why don't we review? psychology and say we're going to take you on right if i'm going to create a cocoa butter product or i'm going to create a shea butter product or i'm going to create a hot sauce or i'm going to create a, a um this gosh this is really beating at the moment um, okay. and or i'm going to have a, a a financial company you know let's look at it let's let's create some brand if you're a financial business let's take on the likes of all the other financial institutes mm -hmm. And look as prestigious and, and, and inviting mm. And, and, mm. and people will take you more serious but the, the point is we don't we tend to make our brands and especially especially in the food side which really really gets my goat because you've got a fantastic product you know it's a good product it's organic it's wholesome you're using all the right ingredients in it let's do it properly let's Take on the likes of when you go into any retailer store and you see the likes of jerk sauce, you know that hasn't been created 
or, or owned by a black person. But yet they've influenced you to buy that jerk shawl. So every other person, multicultural, that goes there, they want to buy a jerk shawl, so they pick that up. But yeah. yet we tend to create our designs and our images on the influences of our own culture and roots when we really should be expanding that into a global view to say this product to sell to everyone to yeah, the yeah. my world right mm -hmm. i want every culture to go into that store and pick up my product they're not going to pick that up if you segregate yourself and you're you're really uh, ostracizing the, the 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 global market by only creating a a, um, a label or packaging that reflects oh your side yeah you could still have that look uh, mm. that from jamaica or saint lucia dominica whatever but it doesn't mean to say you need to make it that black that a white person or an asian person or a chinese person can't go there and pick it up right yeah. uh, so we fall short we we yeah. segregate our brands we we marginalize our audience mm. and we're told so we need to expand our view and look at how our brand is. Even if you started off small in a kitchen, and God, you know, there are so many brands, and I'm not, now not talking about black-owned brands. I, you know, I, I'm not going to name them, but this lady started off with creating raw sauces in her kitchen, right? Mm. She'd done regalia, uh, the, you know, different flavors, so she had about 10 skews. She's in Sainsbury's now. You can find her sources there. Um, That's amazing. If you look at her branding, it's multicultural. It's, it's you know, she's mm. using some of the... And right now, the food, like jerk sauce and, 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 and everything to do with wholesome and ethnic food is massive on the market. Yeah. Why? Because people are turning more to the organic and the healthy products. And it just so happens a lot of the black brands are that. They're just yeah. that. Yeah, it's our time now, yeah. They're, the they're, the, they're the energy, you know, whether they're doing a cosmetic or whether they're doing a, a food product or, or whatever, you know, they, it's all been ethically sort of sound and, mm. and organic taken and, and ingredients are organic. And everyone's turning to that. The vegans and everyone else is all jumping on that yeah, band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? My view is this: <clears throat> Why let the big boys do it and emulate us when we should be emulating ourselves, but taking on the big boys? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Levi Roots did it, right? So Levi Roots did it with the right guidance. Otherwise, he would have never. Made it. But with the right guidance and Peter's uh, 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 entourage of people yeah. that he had, marketing and branding, he's now mm -hmm. a success. So he's taken on. The, the the guidance and uh, the the knowledge of the people that do this every day like us. So mm. we're there to help people. But what we can't do is give you a Rolls Royce for the price of an escort. We we yeah. are, we're good mm. but can't you know we can't do miracles. It's as yeah. simple as so and you know, think about it. I was gonna say you know, this is as I said we've got in <laughs> some core details and we've touched on a lot of things that have been um that have been answered some of the questions and just the guy to let you guys know there will be question time at the end so you know please put your questions and then put your name at the end so we um can be able to answer those another thing i wanted to say is how we've covered quite a lot <laughs> however <laughs> there are some things that haven't been discussed that we can touch on. When, when it comes to us presenting ourselves in all capacities, we talked about branding, we talked about logos, we talked about colors. However, when we present ourselves on platforms, you know, like other platforms, like black owned economy and, how they, oh God, you know, I, I, I need think, to I think, talking about this because I, it's like, I know exactly where you're going to go, right? God, it's just, I, we are we are all an educated culture, right? 
where, where there's some amazing, clever, clever black people in this country. Yeah. Yes. There's some amazing people that are, are not, never even in the limelight, um, music producers who I know, uh, who, who's a very close friend of ours. He's, in fact, the, the, the manager of Stevie Wonder. He's probably the richest black man in this country. But I won't say his name because he won't want me to say his name. Uh, but he's a very close friend of ours. Um, and he does TED Talks. He's also the vice president of one of the largest record labels in the States. Uh, but he lives in this country. He's never on TV. Why? Uh, 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 because maybe he shies away from it, uh, like a lot of my friends do, who, who are very much up there in the business. The problem that we have is this. Um, we want the best, but we're not prepared to be the best to find it. Oh, come on. This is like, oh, heaven to my ears. Come on. Say it again, Patrick. Say it again. <laughs> where, where, where very quick, look, I'm a Hackney boy that came good, right? And at the end of the day, we've spent all our life and all our cult time growing up. And all we've done is skank each other, as we used to say. Wow, yeah. Mm -hmm. Get one over on, on our own brother. The people who oppress us don't need to do anything because we're doing it all for ourselves. Oh, come on. These are just, come, this is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of conversations that I we need to hear and we need to have transparency so, and just saying it as it is. And just no facade, just saying it exactly. They don't need uh, to come after us because we do it uh, to each other. We, we are doing it to ourselves all the time. And we do it to ourselves in life, in business, in works. Uh, someone, you know, I, I look at some of those sites and I see some of the comments and I'm so disheartened uh, because there are people that are obviously trying to make something of their business. Mm -hmm instead of approaching that company directly and putting your complaint, as you would do if you didn't receive your product or the product wasn't right, we're now voicing that on these platforms, our disgruntledness with that company, which is not helping that company, which is no. not helping that company. And we're happy to do that because, hey, we've been doing it all our lives, right? Mm -hmm. We want to know how we feel, well, we need to be a bit more educated. We're not stupid, we're educated people. Mm. And at the end of the day, we need to act that way. We need, yeah. to, we need to help. We're never gonna help each other by dragging each other down. Come on, yeah, exactly. By elevating each other, by, by encouraging each other. Mm. Don't on a platform to 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 bring down that company or that lady that's trying to do her best with that new hair product or whatever if you didn't receive it in time don't get you and your friends and everyone else to go on that platform and slate her it, it, it's not doing her and it's not doing us as a culture and this is what i say we don't need any oppressors to do anything they don't they don't need to they're just sitting yeah. back yeah and exactly they're just doing it to themselves. Exactly. I would say we are too hard on each other. I'm talking about the extre uh, extremely hard. We would not have yeah. that energy if we didn't get, if something was for instance, we're not going to go on Twitter and get all our friends to go on Twitter or go on Facebook and be like, this is what Marks and Spencer has done. But if it's a black business, a small black business, oh God, we're like, right, I'm going to write an essay. I'm going to tell them, <laughs> no one, and I'm going to say that they're back. We don't give each other a chance to grow. And like you said, there is nothing wrong with approaching directly to say, you know, this is, I wasn't happy with this. How can you rectify it? That is love. But already we want to tear down. And that's what we want to do. We always get, not, ev I, I want to clearly say, not everyone is like this. A lot of no. us are waking up and being patient with one another because we're all elevating and we're trying to have our own. We're trying to have our own businesses. We're trying to have um, our own products, services, whatever it is. We're not trying to work for someone else. We're trying to work for ourselves. So in that time, there's a process where we might not get things right, especially with this COVID. Like you said, I've seen some comments where people are saying in regards to the delivery times, you know, come on, like, you know, it's COVID. <laughs> there could be one person 
The person yeah. is going to be inundated with all this, all these customers. Yeah. It's a Black Pound Day, especially, yeah. and they got they could have five hundred orders at one go, and it's only yeah. them. Do they have to do everything? So be patient. With and the also, it's um, and also it's down to the delivery of the post office or whoever the delivery person is. You know, we need to have patience. But you see, because we, in general, are a culture of passion. We tend to express our passion sometimes not in a positive but in a negative fashion. Yeah. Affects others in the business. Yeah. We like I said, we've been doing this for since day dot skanking each other. And we need to stop doing that and we need to build each other up and we need to help each other and we need to listen to people who have done this who are thinking of your best interest at the mm. end of the day. It, Lenny, you know, I've spent time with you. I've spent time with a lot of people that are on here right now. Um, I won't mention any names, but I, I think I'm not going to be product uh, 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 endorsing. <laughs> but I spent oh, no, a lot of time. No, 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 no. Go on. Bring it. Let's, let's, let's That's go. what we're about. Come on. Yeah. I know you're watching, Tasha. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to get my so, order too. I'm going to get my order too because I love candles. I'm, I'm, I'm on it. <laughs> this you me. So this is why it's good. It's got an amazing, it's amazing range. And, and, <laughs> and yet again, about, you know, her, her ethos, her tone of voice for her business of Cornucopia Emporium is, is affordable luxury, right? So all her brands and her products and all that reflect that. It's as simple as that. So mm. she's doing a lot of things to to elevate and build businesses. And I think we all need to do that. We all need to help each other, but most importantly, listen to each other. Um, yeah. I, I normally say, well, I give an hour free uh, consultation on your brand. The rest of the time we charge. And my mm -hmm. business partners take care out because I've spent two, three hours with each person and, you know, and I still ring them back. And I do this because it's in my heart to want mm -hmm. to help yeah and if we don't do this then we are going to fall flat we mm -hmm. we should an advice if i was going to buy a house right now tj if you're listening i'm talking to you end of story that's it because he's doing it he knows what needs to be done i haven't oh, got a clue about the business but mm -hmm. you know branding and packaging and sustainable uh, and 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 all the creative elements of of our business then people like myself and there's others out there as well believe it or not not a lot believe it or not there's not many people of color at a level that we operated at and operate at right now in our yeah. business mm. white. So, you know lap it up take the advice help each other i'm not here to take your money and not give you a good product i'm here to because i if you look if you progress and you become this global brand do you know how fantastic that is for my portfolio? Yeah. Because that, it's yeah. fantastic. Uh, clients will fall over backwards just to, to, to come on board because you've created this amazing brand, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that is elevated. So it's in my best interest to make sure that what we provide our clients with, it, it is the best advice. Mm -hmm. And give them an alternative that if you want to achieve A, you can do it with B, which will cost you X amount, or you can do it with C, which will be slightly less, but the difference is, is that the quality and the exposure of your brand is going to be of a lesser value. So mm. do you want to go with B, or do you want to go with C to make your brand this global presence? So yeah. what it's all about. And, and unfortunately, I do get a lot of people who I've spent a lot of time with mm. uh, um, in the past, you know, regardless of this, uh, 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 th these recent uh, Facebook pages, uh, and I'm talking from all cultures, yeah, uh, that yeah. we a lot of time, awful lot of energy, um, and at the end of the day, they've decided to go with someone cheaper and it's taken them twice as long or if not, because if you guys, if anyone's out there right now who's got up from a dream and thought of an Elixir product, whether it's a food or a non-food product, and you really want to get up in the morning and say, I want that to be my business. Mm. Please don't think 
on the short term level. Don't yes. think on the on. level. Don't that think how true. much oh, oh, I've only got a hundred pounds yeah. to do. This. You really have to invest in it. You really must do that and 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 build it up and make your product pay for itself. I'm not saying go out there and 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 you know because you might ask us to do a, a packaging or a packaging label and that you think that oh you know like most companies they have a minimum order charge uh, you have to order something like ten thousand for it to be achievable etc and things like that we provide solutions on digital because we've got digital litho flexo etc so we can provide those solutions and say so we'll do it on digital it won't be as good as doing it on litho but we can do it on digital if you're just for 200 labels or something to that mm -hmm. effect um but at least then you can get your product out of there on the market. It looks decent and make your product pay for itself. So the, the, the profit you make from that, you invest back into the business by getting your labels done properly or getting your branding done properly. This is how you need to elevate your business, make your, your products pay for itself. Mm -hmm. Look at that as an investment in your business because it's just like anything in life. If you, if you start up a, a marketing agency or you decide to be a recruitment consultant, etc. You're going to go out there, you're going to buy computers, you're going to buy a printer, you're going to buy a, a fax machine or whatever else you, you're going to buy mm -hmm. you're going to in the offices. Um, they will not be cheap, and that's part of your investment. So if you're willing to buy the best in that and you're willing to have the new iPhone in your hand that you've just spent, you know, a thousand pounds on, yeah, why not try and spend some money on your branding? It's actually going to earn you more money at the yeah. end of the day. Yeah, just like you said, it's not about the short term, you know, and that's no. what people need to realise is if they want to have a sustainable business and have, have longevity in their industry, they need to invest. They need to do yeah. that research and they need to invest and they need to have a clear, how can I say it? Uh, you know, I feel like I don't want this to be, this isn't a generic kind of talk. This is a life-giving talk that we're doing right now, that we're having right now, because I want people to be elevated through this talk, to, to really retrain their mindset, to, to say to themselves, do you know what? I've just listened to this live. It has been really inspirational, and now I'm, I'm changing my direction. I'm thinking about I need to have a sustainable business. Instead of just making money, I want to be wealthy. I want my brand yeah. to be everywhere. I don't want to just target one demographic. So Absolutely. it's important that yeah. we, as black people, elevate ourselves. And in order for us to elevate, that take that takes money as well. You know, research, it knowledge, it and money. There's, there's three principles. And, you know, yep. you have to make sure that you... We have to get serious now, and that's how it is. We have to get serious. We have to realise that we have to put our best foot forward, and there's a level of excellence in everything we do going forward. What we did before, yeah, that was okay, but this life that we're having right now is going to change that to make you think, hold on a minute, I was only thinking one level, but now I can think, I can be global. Why do I have to only target one demographic? And it's important that we change our mindset because that's what it's about. It's about elevating as a society, as a community, as black brothers and black sisters. And that is what it's all about. So I was going to say, um, we're going to be taking questions because there's a lot of questions that uh, have come in. However, finish what you were saying, um, Patrick, please. Well, I was, you, you really touched on so many points there, uh, uh, in all fairness, Lenique, that I was going to mention. I think we do need to do that. I think we need to, to wake up and, and, and smell the roses, really, at the end of the day and say to ourselves, I'm, I'm not prepared to be a, a, a minor brand. I want to be a global brand. There is nothing stopping any business any brand, no matter what you're producing, from being a global brand. The only yeah. thing that's going to stop you is from you thinking small and from you thinking that, you know, uh, uh, I want to just sell it to my friends. I, I just want to get rid of 500 or whatever to my friends and family. You shouldn't be, think, be thinking, I need to go on Amazon if you're a food product uh, uh, or even if you're a non-food product, sell it on Amazon first. Please don't think about going into retail unless you've got very, if you are humming and hawing about paying 
for branding. I can guarantee you're going to have even a bigger wake up call if you want to go into retail. You're going to need pockets so deep you will not understand how your head will be spinning. Because yeah. when you're talking a couple of thousand pounds here, we're, we're talking an awful lot of money. Because, and even if your product and you've paid that money to a retailer because they do the marketing, et cetera, like Sainsbury's, Tesco's, or whatever, you're paying for your product to be on a certain level on that shelf whether it be eye level, you will see all the major brands being at eye level, etc. cetera. Uh, they pay an awful lot of money for that product to be there. And if you've paid that money and your brand is not being uh, uh, um, produced in the right manner, uh, for a start, some of the retail companies will turn you away. Um, and then they'll, they, you've lost that money because they'll still take your products off the shelf because the sales figures show that your brand is not selling. So there's a lot of don't even understand about food packaging. I mean, we specialize in, in packaging in general. We understand the, the legalities of what you need to put on your packaging, um, the must-haves, the nice-to-haves, um, and, and even down to, you know, there's, I spoke to a lovely lady the other day who's creating this wonderful jerk sauce, and I said, does it contain nuts in any shape or form, or did you cook it in anything at home that you cooked something that had nuts? And she said, well, I might do. Uh, I said, well, put it this way, if someone dies from buying your product because they're allergic to nuts and it's been cooked in a pot that you cooked something with nuts two days ago, it, there's still that residue. Um, unless you state it on your packaging, you will be sued and closed down because the UK packaging law, which we know very well on mm -hmm. food and food products, there's a certain amount of elements that you have to put there because I helped to put together the packaging brand guidelines for Sainsbury's uh, and yeah. M&S. Uh, I know what needs to go on there, whether it be a food packaging or non-food packaging. This is our game, this is what we do. And it's right. just to one thing before I take the message, it's not in our best interest to provide you with something that we're not proud of. We mm. believe in providing yeah. our clientele with an excellence of product because it reflects on yeah. Unlike some of the designers or you go into these websites that sell it to you for 50 quid or whatever, once you buy that, they don't care whether you fail or not. For me, yeah. it's about whether you're going to be a success. So yeah. that's important to me. It's about you going out there with, you know, you don't go into battle with one bullet in your gun. You okay. go out there with a gun fully loaded, Right and more ammunition. So if I'm providing your product, your brand, with all the ammunition you need to take on that big wide world, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I feel good, and at the end of the day, I can sit back and say, that is progressing. We produce future brands. It's not just something for tomorrow. Okay, amazing, 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 amazing. And yeah, we have got some questions already that were coming in. Um, before so hold on one moment pat tomlinson asks do you say the logo file should be cnyk um it depends um now we produce a brand and i'll, I'll come back to that again it's a brand um your logo is a depiction of your brand okay um now for different uh, uh, uh formats uh, like for a website, you need a PNG or, or, or a JPEG because this usually mm. works in GB. If you're going yeah. into uh, going to go and do some embroidery, then you need your your logo outlined. Um, you need your font outlined uh, because then that that software won't pick it up, and they can't work on a JPEG. That they literally have to mm. draw that. Um, so if you're going into packaging or printing or brochures or even you know, put up a signage outside your door. Uh, in your shop or whatever, that needs to be all done in outlines and, and the fonts need to be outlined. You know, we need to work in CMYK. The full, the whole it print industry works in CMYK. The only people that work in RGB are the things like for video photographers, uh, 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 video makers, uh, website producers. Uh, they all work in RGB. They don't work in CMYK. Because at the end of I was going to say just quickly, because there's a question from Siobhan Witter, um, you know, what's the format we should be using? However, 
if you are using PNG, is that okay for the time being? Just getting, you know, is that is that okay for the time being? Because there's a lot of people that do have PNG or JPEG for the time being, or would you say they should go to a designer or graphic designer to be able to do it in? Well, really, if uh, <laughs> any company or any graphic designer worth their salt, they should be providing you with your brand like we do. We don't only just provide your brand. We provide you documentation of your brand, meaning we give you a synopsis of why the brand was created. We give you the fonts as well. And anything that we've created on the logo or the branding, if you want to call it that, um, is all outlined as well. Now, the reason being, if you use a PNG, now a PNG has a clear background. Mm. Most of the time, that's on uh, an RGB. You cannot use that if you wanted to create, say, uh, a, a really good label, uh, uh, which is going to be LIFO printed, and you want new designs put in the background. Well, for a start, a PNG and JPEG are usually quite high, low res. Uh, 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 formulas um, and, and formats. Um, we work in AI and we work in, in, in illustrators and, 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 and uh, that sort of f format. Most of the printers, in fact, every packaging that you see goes through this process. We create the design, whether it be for branding, and then once the design is done, especially for packaging, this is as well, um, then we put on the logos, um, and that's all done in the next stage. So you've got one stage being design of your mm. packaging or your, your label, and then it has to go to artwork, and there's a cost for artwork. And mm. companies, large uh, multimedia companies out there right now, like the Sun Brandings and Short, they, they specialize, and like we do, um, and they have a charge for that. And, you know, it, there is a charge for that. And so the artwork's got to be created to make sure all the trappings are right for it to be printed. Then it's got to go for repro graphics. Now, once it goes to repro graphics, your file has got to be created. Like, what, if you imagine... Uh, uh, you've got a cardboard box, you've got a tin, and then you've got a bread packet. Each of those are a different process of printing. For flexo printing, for all the packets and the pouches and stuff like that, you need to increase the weight of your lineage around your product. You need to increase the font size, otherwise it just doesn't hold. So for each different mm -hmm. print process, you have a different way of doing the repro for it. Now, the people that are doing this cheap and cheerful, they haven't got a clue. I can tell you that now. They, they just <laughs> your brand and say, off you go. You paid me a hundred pounds for it or 200 pounds or whatever else they're charging. They're not, if you, those are the questions you need to ask them. These are the fundamental questions is what brands have they produced? What brand knowledge do they have? What mm. print do they understand? We specialize in that, so we know, we sometimes work in reverse. If we know you're going into a sustainable product uh, or biodegradable product, there are certain ink that won't hold on that. So we then need to create the artwork and the packaging design according to that product and the inks that are going to be used. You can't just create it and think, oh, it'll be produced on that product. It will never happen that way. And these are where the, the costs come in and people don't understand that part of it. Um, and, and, and even down to brochures, when, when someone creates a design or a designer creates a design, when they hand that over to you and you hand that over to a print company, in that price that they've given you, be, there's going to be repro graphics cost because they have to make sure all the trappings are right for each layer because you've got to remember on Litho, four different plates. And also a lot of designers don't understand uh, when they're creating these wonderful cheap logos is that they're using sometimes special colors. And these special colors means that you're actually going to pay more when it goes to print because it, the normal print process is for color. And if you've got a special color that is specially made up, then that has to be a special ink that has to be That's made up. Great. And then a separate plate and a separate plate that has to print. So you're actually charged for that special color mm. probably twice as what you're being charged for all the rest of it. So your price... It just goes up sky mm -hmm. high. So a lot of designers that don't have that experience will not be able to give you that 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 knowledge. Okay. Okay. Um right. Okay. It's as I said, this is just really amazing. You know, I can't wait to watch it back and to really absorb the content <laughs> information. 
it, 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 it's, it's really good. Um, well, everyone who's received the PNG file to understand that you're going to be limited. You're going to be yeah. limited in the future. So that can be short. Can that can be short term. So even a lot of people that have got JPEG and PNG, the next step for them would be to get the the CNYK, get that developed. That would be the next it step. Has to be, it has yeah. to be recreated. It has to be recreated. Everyone, there's some people because what we have to understand is that there's some people on here that are going to invest in themselves, and then some people at a later stage. So for now, obviously, you would say. CNYK would be the next step if they want to kind of CNYK, yeah, which is sign magenta, sign magenta yellow, and the, the K is for kilo, but it stands for for black. Oh, okay, 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 right. Which is why the Ku Klux Klan calls itself KKK. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so also. With regarding branding and, you know, you were talking about sustainability and that is big right now. Sustainability. Yeah. And that is what you're known for. Is that important for a new brand coming into the market to have their core values in regards to sustain sustainability and the eco-friendly? Is that really important? Like a short term because you don't want to be a gimmick i think uh, no uh, i think sustainability and and it depends it works on many in many areas whether your product is sustainable product are you buying your product from a sustainable source uh, are your products coming in you know like a lot of people walked away from palm oil for example because palm oil is not a sustainable source and what it's doing to the environment etc and things like that so is your product sustainable, you know, sustainable and all the ingredients within your product? So there's that part, the sustainability. Now, if it comes down to packaging and eco-friendly packaging or biodegradable packaging, now these products don't come cheap because the manufacturer of the boards, just so everyone knows right now, and, and the films that are biodegradable and, and, and the PPEs that are, you can, we've got products that you can literally bury in your garden and it will turn to soil. As well as a lot of products that say they're recyclable or, or compostable, there's a difference between home compostable and industrial compostable. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are buying into compostable uh, 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 um, situation, but what they don't realize is that their product is not home compostable. You put that in your home cops, you put that bottle that says home compostable or just compostable into your recycling or, or your, your, your compost bin, it's going to be there for the next 20 years. It's not mm. going to move. It's only industrial compostable. So mm. on, on sustainability, there are products out there and boards and material and substrates, but the manufacturers of those, because they know it's the in word right now out there in the market, uh, mm. and everyone wants to be eco-friendly, thinking about yeah. the planet. Yeah. They want yeah. to reduce their footprint. Um, so the manufacturers have up their price. So when we buy in the raw material, we have to make sure that that's equivalent to the price. So in most occasion, eco-friendly products and sustainable products are actually more expensive. But it's yeah. like I said to you once before, yeah. it's going to be like a phone, right? When we first used to walk around Soho with those great big brick phones and had to pick them up, they were like 1500 you know, 2000 pound a phone. Now you can go into Tesco's and buy one for 30 quid. But give it a couple of more years, be more available, and it's just a natural process of it coming down. Mm. On the plastic side, there's a law coming in. So if you're a, a manufacturer, if you're thinking about producing a product and it's got a plastic bottle, uh, in the next couple of years, the law will state that you have to have at least 30% of that bottle needs to be of recycled plastic. Okay. okay, that means okay. if you 100% virginal plastic, you will be paid tax for each one of those products. Mm. But I was going to say, um, okay. is glass okay? Sorry, is glass okay? Because I know someone that's in the, the chat. Glass is, now. is the best glass thing of all. Glass is the best thing of all. 
as simple as that. A lot of people, you know, they want a chic look and they want to go black plastic. Well, black plastic is a no-no because that's the one that's causing the most problems out there right now. So if you want to go for the amber or the clear or the green, that's fine. That's, that's absolutely perfect in, in plastic or glass. Um, but, you know, glass is is the, the most sustainable, uh, eco-friendly product out there right now. It okay. just so happens it costs a bit. A lot more, yeah, but you can factor that in. So, yeah, Pat, you're doing good. <laughs> yeah, it's just someone within uh, the, the group. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so you know, talk has been amazing. You know, it's it's been Thank very you. inspiring. I know a lot of people in the comments, this has been valuable. You know, this is valuable information. Thank you, apostrophes. You know, and on different platforms, people need to hear this because as a people, we need to elevate and we need to be told the truth. And in regards yeah. to other Stop races... Doing palm trees. Stop doing sorry. palm trees and sunset. Stop yeah. doing palm trees and sunset. <laughs> Yes. Just don't do it. You know, you can have a wonderful, you know, you can create your branding with the, you know, with, with the, the the you know Jamaica. As I know one girl's doing right now with Greece. She's got the, the outline of Greece in her in her brand. Uh, you can do that and make it look elegant and, and swish and 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 you know of of stature. Yeah. But please. You know, yeah. let's, let's just move up. Let's just yeah. think elegance, excellence, and yeah. and and that your brand needs to be. Think your think of your brand, no matter what you're doing, what about what your product is, whether it's your business or whatever. How would that sit next to a really famous, mm. up to date brand? If it sits mm. out like a sore thumb, or take it on, then you know, you know, if it sits out like a sore sore thumb, you need to start again, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But if, and it's, it's of equivalent value next to it, then you know you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Just like you were saying about the palm trees, no more palm trees or anything generically black or, you know, we need to come away from that. We can have elements and it's all about what, does, what everything that Patrick has said and we've discussed is all about us refining what we present. It's about <laughs> elevating it and it's refining it. We can take elements elements of our culture and refine it that's what other races are doing and, running off and bleeding us dry you know of our culture yeah. and what yeah. we have as a people you know we're so talented so unique and anyone that's listening right now and going to be listened to afterwards now's the time to rethink how you present yourself your brand everything to do with your brand your tone of voice everything you know the terms now you understand what it means Go back and do the research. That's what it's about. You know, with me, I do a lot of research. Sometimes it will be, uh, I'm overwhelmed. And my family that are watching this right now, hi, mom, hi, family, hi, grandma. Happy birthday, grandma. Sorry. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, she's 88 today. I just want to say, happy birthday, grandma. I just had to put that in there. I love you so much. You know, um, yeah, so, you know, it's about, I get very, I get tunnel vision when it comes to my brand because I know where I want to go. No matter if anyone else is there, you know, I know that. You, you, time. you know, I've, uh, go ahead. yeah. Go ahead. You know, I've discussed with you in private. Yeah. Oh we yeah, had yeah, certain yeah, yeah, yeah. And and we love it, you know. And yeah. uh, I like the root thing, the me. Uh, I love it in the sense of the 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 tone of voice and where you are and what you're trying to do and what you're trying to achieve within your own brand. And um, we didn't have really much to say about it, did we? Um, we had a fairness. few things. Loved it. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, there were a few things. Yeah. However, I don't, oh, I don't get, I don't get, um, how can I say it? I don't get offended anymore because I knew it came from love. No. And, you know, we're, yeah, we're friends, it came from That's love. So bad. Yeah. yeah, so I know, yeah. and that's, that's what it's what about. It <laughs> and that's what it's about. You know, when you care about someone, 
you admonish them because you want yes. them to be better. And admonishing is, is it might not, you might not like it and it might not feel nice, but it's about encouraging the person and being like, you know what, sis, you know what, bro, the way you did that, maybe you can do it differently, but in a gentle way, yeah. you know, because sometimes we can be yeah. very harsh with one another, you know, very uh, too harsh. harsh. Too harsh. Uh, from what yeah. I've seen on some of we've been too hard on people and it yeah. needs to stop so yeah. we need to encourage we need to grow we need to uh, uh you know look there's you know don't think back a yard right anymore think global simple as yeah. that, right? We, that. <laughs> right we don't need to go down that route anymore mm -hmm. we need to show that everyone's incredible race Incredible race, urgent race. Yes. We don't need them to think that we just came off a beach, right? And and that all my, my stuff is going to reflect that. We need them to see that we're educated. We need them, you know, come on, let's have some some pride in ourselves in that sense. Um, let's let's elevate that pride and, and, oh. and put that, that effort else yeah. into our product, in branding. Listen to people, you know, if there was someone on here that that knew about cbd because you know I, I would like to look at that as a product and i would listen to them yeah we can always learn we always learn every single day of our lives and let's not be blinkered mm. let's be and 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 use our intelligence because let's be honest look we've dominated so many aspects in this world right sports we've dominated right athletics um, all right, not so much in swimming at the moment, but I'm sure we're going to get there. In, <laughs> in, in football, in all these different things, we've had our forefathers who have created some of the most mm. iconic things that we all take now. So we should be saying to ourselves, you know what? We can do that with my brand. That's where I want to be. You need to think big. You need to think of the highest level and have some pride in what you do. And don't just a label on your product and think yeah that might sell to my you know 50 of my family or whatever you, you should be thinking i need to do a really lovely branding or for my business or my product or, or anything you know when it, when it comes to business brand makes and breaks a company end mm -hmm. of if everyone well all you got to look at is the most successful brands in the world Look at Apple right now. Most one of the most successful brands in the world. It's overtaken an oil company in Saudi Arabia. It's stock shares is worth millions of dollars. So when I look at them, it inspires me to say, I want to create a brand for someone that I want to see them on that stock exchange mm. at some stage, uh, yeah. and being elevated yeah. to that level. There's there's nothing yeah. stopping us, right? Mm. We just need to be real. We need to be real and realize that. We need to spend money, spending to accumulate money, yeah? Spending it smart, taking good advice, going down. Don't think cheap and cheerful because it's never going to pay off in the long run. Yeah. At the end of the day, think where you want to be, right? There's so many people, you know, look, mm. there's an old saying, you get what you pay for. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, we and want to go to the market and we want the best stuff. We want the we want the best quality stuff, right, at the end of the day. And so we're willing to pay a little bit more for that best quality stuff. So we'll do that for your own company, right, yeah. With, in, in every aspect. Start mm -hmm. off on that level, you know. Got great aspirations, uh, Lenique, for your business, and I love it. And like I said, I've seen I got, a document I got like big, that before. Big, big, big plans. I've got big plans for my jewellery business. You're definitely right as well as Black Creators Unite. i got big plans, you know. Yeah. Um, just going on, yeah. I remember when I first, when we were speaking, and I was saying a lot of people looked at this brand, is this a generic, another generic, this Black group? And I was like, no, 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 if you know who I am, this is not going to be generic. You know, I, I want to change yeah, my brothers and black sisters' lives. Just so everyone knows out there, I've seen, I've seen your tone of voice, I've seen your comments, and you're far from being generic. I can tell you that I'm so proud of you. Honestly, I um, really am. Um, talking about you, actually, to so many other people, I said, look, she's this amazing jewelry designer, you know, totally bespoke stuff, and she does some 
you know, she's so high up there in 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 the design world as far as jewelry. So you know, it just makes me very proud, you know, at the end of the day. And and some of my friends who are so high up there in the acting world and in, in the music business, and I can't mention their names, I, they'll kill me. Um, and I know one of them is watching right now, actually, uh, as he said to me, he would be. And uh, you know. You're my brother, and I love you very much. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. And, um, you, you know, they've always got my back, and I've always got their back. And at the end of the day, we've always been supportive, and we always talk about the same things, really, when we're together, that we are our own worst enemy, and we need to stop that, and we need to stop now. We need to excel yeah, ourselves. We need, we need to help other people and, and get up in the morning and think, you know what? I want to create a brand. I want my business to be a brand that everyone wants to be with or wants yeah. to buy into. Yes, yes. There's nothing stopping yeah. If the Chinese can do it with TikTok, what's stopping us? No, it's true. And like you said, what is stopping us? You know, nothing is stopping us. And we are going to get to the top. I am telling you, it is by force. <laughs> you know, and that's and that's yeah. what I'm saying. I say that yeah. with passion because we are going to get there, every single one of us, because there's so much beauty and uniqueness and talent within every yeah. single black person. And sometimes they just need to be shaken and realize who they are. And this is why yeah. I create this platform. And I keep saying it again and again. So people know it is not about me. I don't care. This is not about me to put my name out there. I'm doing all of this because I want to help yeah. my black brothers and my black sisters, simple as. You know, I want us to get into the mindset yeah. of that if, if one of us is winning, we're all winning. Like, you know, we need to be happy and, and congratulate that. And there's nothing wrong with that. So we need to unite as people, you know, and elevate and go to the next level. And like I said in the last talk, I said, if you want to be substandard and, you know, and I'm going to look in the camera, if you want to be substandard and you want to just, you're just content at being just the way you are, then you need to get out of this group and not associate with it. And I'm saying it black and white because yeah. everyone within this yeah. group and that is associated with this platform, we are elevating as people. We are going to the very, very yeah. top. 2020 is going to be life changing. Yeah. 2021 is going to be because okay. even through these talks we're doing, people are getting like straight away the ideas are coming down to them. They're like, oh, I can do this, I can do this because I listened to Patrick's talk and that idea that I had ages ago that I thought I'm just going to leave. Now it's given me the unction to be like, I'm going to start it. I'm going to go to the bank and I'm going to invest. So I'm going to get that money, that pocket of money that I've got in my in my bank. And I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to contact Patrick and I'm going to elevate myself and my brand. You're going to take those calculated um, that you're going to get to the next level. And that's what we need to do. That's what the other races are doing. And that's what we need to do. It needs to be natural. It needs to be normal. It's not unnatural for us to want to elevate as people. And that's what we need to get into our heads. You know, we need to realize yeah. that we are not what they say we are. You know, that's another thing. There's a narrative that they're using concerning us as black people. And we need to, as I say, it's not about what we say, it's what we show. So let them see us. We're all the tortoises right now, but the tortoises always win. And we are going to win. And that is as simple as that. Half, half, the, problem, <laughs> half the problem, <laughs> half the problem, Lenique, is that um, for as millennium times have gone, the cultures have oppressed us. So we've got accustomed to that. And we tend to think on that level and that we can't reach that level. And it's time, as you say, to change that, to wake up and change that and think, well, I, I'm, I'm gonna create an, a, a Microsoft business. I'm gonna create an Apple business. I oh, would dearly, yes to help so many of you out there just some um, makes me proud to walk through you know like my kids do right now with Sainsbury's and M&S and my little girl goes oh dad you create that you did that and stuff like that. so yeah. if my two little well they're not little, actually my two kids are watching right now I love you guys my, my son is the the business boy and my daughter's the creative one she's going to be a lot more creative than I will ever be <laughs> um this is what 
be looking at it. You know, we should be time. If you've got a product, no matter what your product is, no matter what your business you're in, have a look. And I always say this, look at your competitors. Well, not look at your competitors. Look who's leading the field out there. Look at them and say, I want to be like that. And if you want to be like that, then you need to invest money into doing something to make it like that because those people didn't go on there on, on a shoestring and a couple of shekels in their pocket. They got on there by investing into that business and believing in that business. And I know that there's, there's an awful lot of people that are creating products right now, right now, and I see it amazing. In fact, there's a Michelin star chef who just bought a, 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 um, a hot sauce as well. Not many black Michelin stars in this year, and I could tell you, hands up. And, and Malcolm, I need to work with you. And I know you've spoken to me already, but I need to help you because at the end, that's where we need to take our businesses, right? right. We need to, we, we care about these. So we need to make sure that these people's products are, are talked about because let's be honest, if Michelin star chef and Levi Roots was never a Michelin star chef, can you imagine his, his the taste yeah. of his sauces, what they're going to be exactly. like, exactly. right? amazing yeah. so let, let's let get these people up there and i would dearly love to walk through the aisles of sainsbury's or cardo whatever uh, uh waitrose and see more brands that more i know us. were owned by businesses yeah exactly more of us but i just want to say thank you so much patrick like this is really an amazing an amazing 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 I'm happy to help everyone Thank you, everyone. And Lenny, thank you as well. Oh, no, it's nothing. This is, you know, my our people needed this. We need to be injected with this wisdom, this knowledge to understand, okay, I need, need to take it. And that is what is taking place. And, you know, it's, it's just absolutely amazing. And I'm just so thankful for your support. I thank you for, you know, believing in this platform and, you know, as I know, you're a very simple and quiet man that doesn't really like to be at the, you know, people wouldn't even know about you, I suppose, with this platform. You'll still be being an industry leader and doing what you're doing and pioneer. But it's so good that we get these nuggets, you know, and, and that's love. And that's how we can help one another by sharing knowledge and not being yeah. scared to share knowledge. Yeah. However, you know, when we get that knowledge, we actually apply it to our businesses and our lives. And it's important that we just don't, take it well we don't take it and utilize it because you know there's people out there winning when they get this kind of content and this wisdom and knowledge and they run with it they run like for dear life they they just like right i've got this i've got these tools i am going and nothing is going to stop me no negativity no Absolutely. one's saying that i can't do it i can do it and that's what you need to have and you need to have a tenacious spirit that nothing can shake you. You need to have a tunnel vision that no matter what is going on around me, no matter what I thought yesterday, I'm thinking now, I need to know that I'm going to make it. And the only person that will get in my way is myself. So you have to just go yeah. for it and that's all you can do. But thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely. Flood the market, guys. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, yes. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But just to let you guys know, on the next episode, I don't go yet, um, Patrick. <laughs> on the next I'm episode, um, we're going to have Samuel Ade, and he is an entrepreneur, an industry leader, doing great things in the co-working space. And he's just, oh. he's a firecracker. He is a, all about equipping our black brothers and black sisters and elevate. And that is going to be a fantastic. Love it. Can't wait. It's going to be really good. And he is, a, well, especially the younger generation and just helping us in general, you know, that is going to be fantastic. But thank you so much, everyone. Uh, yes, thank you, everyone. Fantastic. Thank you so much for all the people. You know, I'm just going to mention a few as I do. Natasha, Siobhan, Pat, Jared. Natasha. Uh, uh, Charlene, my mom, my grandma, my family that I'm watching in, my dad, Happy my cousins, you know, <laughs> you know, everyone, the whole family, and Nadine Brown, sorry, no, you forgot you, and you know, everyone oh, else. Oh, I, 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 I okay. <laughs> what did you say? I spoke to Nadine, actually, Nadine Brown. 
Yeah, she said. Yeah, she did. Yeah, she did. <laughs> and also to your um your son and your daughter. Thank you so much oh. for listening on your dad. I hope you're proud. You've done so well. So yeah, this has been amazing. So thank you, thank you so much, thank everyone. You. Thank and you, everyone. And I, I just wish everyone well and flood the market, guys. Flood the market. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Okay, bye everyone. Bye bye.